Hi everybody and welcome to another Eurovision Winners A Closer Look. My name is Hayo and I want to thank you for tuning in today. Uh, I also would like to kindly ask you if you do like these videos please subscribe somewhere along the lines of here to these videos and to this channel. Uh, that would mean the world to me if you would do that so thank you very much. I also have a different channel which I'm calling now Hayo Entertainment. In my last video it was still called Hayo Music but what are the odds? Somebody else uses the same channel name on YouTube, so I had to change it. Hiyo Entertainment. I'm already. I'm also uploading uh, one of my own videos on this channel, so that you can have a little sample of what I'm doing when I'm not doing this thing, but when I'm singing. So, today's Eurovision winner. You know how you have preconceived notions sometimes about something, and you also know that like a true Jessica Fletcher, I research the living daylights out of my subjects. If you don't know Jessica Fletcher, by the way, then congratulations. You were born after 1996, and I envy your age. Anyway, these preconceived notions that something is going to be boring or not interesting, well, kind of true, but I also learned something. I learned that DeForest is an actual last name, not a stage name, plus that our subject today claims to be a great, 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 and so forth, granddaughter of Queen Victoria. Or King Edward, I get confused. It's Emily DeForest, and only teardrops. So of course we want to get to the juicy stuff, okay? To the royal stuff, but first I have to get some things out of the way. She was born on the 28th of February, 1993. She grew up both in Denmark and Sweden. By the way, their languages are very similar. Have you seen The Bridge, that show? Didn't really much care for it. I know I'm in the minority there. Three episodes, I was done. But if they speak slowly, they can understand each other. So Swedish and Danish, it's kind of the same language. Anyway, moving on. She started singing and performing at a young age, yada, yada, yada. Started studying in Copenhagen, which is a beautiful city, by the way. If you have the chance to go and see that city, do it. It's amazing. Not just a little mermaid, she's a little tiny. But for the rest, Whew, amazing city, go. Um, and she studied there at the Complete Vocal Institute. Okay, royalty. Now, Queen Victoria had a son. Her oldest or eldest son, whatever, is called Edward VII, okay? So far, huge fairy tale. Turns out that Edward had an affair with an Austrian princess born in Sweden, and he had a son with her. And that son turned out to be Emily's grandfather. Through her grandfather, Emily claims to be a royal. Is this true? No. That's the short answer. Marlene Eilers Koenig, she's American. I know, I would have thought she was German too. She um, researched this and she wrote a lot of books on Queen Victoria. And she says, no, Emily has... American ancestry, and she has a lengthy essay on this subject. I read it not all because basically it's too long. She's quite vindictive though too, this Marlene Eilers Koenig, because when you question her results and her research, she's becoming very mean and vindictive. At the time, the Danish broadcaster also brought someone in, a British genealogist, Tony Martin. No, 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 not this Tony Martin, the singer like a different Tony Martin. This Tony Martin guy, he says that it's impossible to prove either way if there's a connection between Emily and the British royal family. And at the same time, he says, yeah, there is a connection. I just don't know what. True story. The fact is that the Danish broadcaster scrapped the whole story from the promotional material, but Emily still claims that she is royal family, a of royal blood, whatever you want to call it. And you know, in 2009, someone told us to always be in love with fairy tales, so bless your heart, Emily. But let's get back to the music and the contest. Now, the 58th edition of the Eurovision Song Contest was held in Malmö, Sweden. Loreen won in 2012, of course, with I think what is the biggest Eurovision classic since Waterloo in 1974, Euphoria. We had 39 countries participating, and because it's Sweden, they want to change something, of course, about Eurovision, because that's what they always do when they have to organize it. Uh, this time, they made it so that there was a parade of nations at the start of the show, which is actually quite 
a nice change, to be honest. At the start of the show, all the countries were called out, and there would be a flag waving, and and then the act would follow after the flag. And it's it's very nice. Yes, it's a nice addition. Yes. And of course, also in 2013, Sweden gave us Petra Mied. I think that's how you pronounce it. And she became an icon right away, one of the best hosts in modern history of the contest, I dare to say. And with her smorgasbord of Eurovision sense of humor, she captured every heart, dare I say. She captured us by a love storm. I think I do. I just did. And after eight years of being on the sidelines, finally the Netherlands participated in a final again. So the Netherlands was back in the final, the crowds were happy, and of course, as we do, we made the Netherlands a favorite right away <laughs> that year as well, along with uh, Denmark, obviously, and Norway, who send a hard rock techno hybrid with I Feed You My Love, uh, the Netherlands, as I mentioned, with Birds and Anouk, Ukraine sent Gravity, and a female singer who was carried on stage by what I can only call like a sort of Hodor type, a big giant. Uh, if you don't know Game of Thrones or are reading the books, you have no idea who Hodor is, but I'm probably going to put a picture up here somewhere. You see, I was right. Another favorite was Sweden, of course. They're always favorites, so why not this year? And then we have to talk about Bonnie Tyler. She represented the UK that year with Believe in Me, and she was ridiculed by a lot of people. Now that I've created this platform for myself, I would like to say something about that. Shame on you. Shame on everybody. Disparaging Bonnie Tyler. She's a legend. Of course she didn't sound like she did in 1983 with Total Eclipse of the Heart or 1985 or 6 with Holding Out for a Hero. Of course not. The woman was nervous. You could see that. Give the woman a break, but we can't do that. Here in the West, we have to build up our artists and once they are old, we just break them down, don't we? And by the way, she had a charting album in the UK in 2013, and that was the first time she had a charting album in 28 years. So who's having the last laugh now? Ha! Ah, legend. Now, Only Teardrops is, of course, a very bouncy, happy-go-lucky pop song, and basically without real competition in the contest that year, so the voting, voting went very smoothly for them, although Azerbaijan received twice more dues point than Emily did. Uh, the third win for Denmark, and of course, because she won, we got to see that cute guy playing the recorder again. Yes, him. <laughs> There's a lot of people who love the song. It's a big, huge fan favorite. It was a huge hit all over Europe. It even reached number two in Brazil. Who'd have thunk? Unfortunately, we did not hear a lot from Emily after her Eurovision win. She performed in 2014. Uh, she performed only Teardrops and Rainmaker during the Eurovision Song Contest of that year. Her second album was released until 2018, but in the years between the release of her first album in 2014 and her second album, she did not sit still. She uh, co-wrote, for instance, the song Never Give Up On You, which was performed by Lucy in 2017 at Eurovision, representing the UK. And that is all I have on Emily the Forest and Only Teardrops. So this was Emily. Thanks for watching. Click on any other video that you like to see here. As I said, I've uploaded one of my own videos as well. Uh, it's a Hindi song. It's my latest effort. I hope you like it. Um, and then we'll see each other some other time.